<laughs> yes. Good morning. Welcome to Unity on the River. My name is Bill Free. And before Hi, Bill. Hi John. <laughs> <laughs> Namaste. My friends. Uh, it's funny, I was, I was just talking to Ed uh, in the back room. I said, I'm a little nervous uh, doing the platform. This is my first time. And he said, that's your family out there. So thank you. I love you all. Before we start our formal service, I'll go over uh, our celebrations and announcements with you. In gratitude for the souls that came yesterday uh, for the decluttering, uh, just, let's just honor them with an applause. They, uh, can we change the slide? Yeah. They, they did an amazing uh, cleanup. We have a feedback here on the mic. They did an amazing cleanup, uh, Frank. Can we see who came yesterday? Yeah. Uh, if you have a chance after the service, go take a look at what the, at this wing of our center looks like. It's just beautiful. All the rooms energetically have changed. I know our children and our teachers and the staff is really going, and also you guys are going to enjoy the changes energetically that have happened from the decluttering yesterday. So thank you, everyone, for the, that came out to help with that. Now we have uh, uh, Barbara Evans. Uh, she offers a, uh, a workshop today after the service. If you could please stand, Barbara, and be recognized. Is Barbara in here? She's probably still setting up. OK. Uh, Barbara is an author and healing artist. She's a certified. Reiki master, crystal resonance therapist, and a shiatsu practitioner. And uh, this is a sample of her work. She does mandalas, and she has uh, uh, her work at her table out in the bookstore. You can see her after the service in the bookstore and sign up for her workshop. Uh, I know you'll enjoy uh, that, uh, that work. It's, uh, it's a frequency vibration, it's meditative, and it sounds like it's really going to be a lot of fun. And also the experience of rising into a higher uh, consciousness. And, and so now we're going to ask Jane Cowan if she'll come up and talk to us about our new envelopes. I stand in the presence. Would you all look at That on. There we go. All right. So you'll notice the envelopes look different. Um, we are trying an experiment, and we've had some suggestions, and are always trying to make things flow and easier here at Unity on the River. So we came up with this idea, and I want to thank Jim McQuaid for providing our first prototype. Um, <laughs> one of the things we became aware of is um, we have a lot of new people coming to Unity, which is fabulous. Welcome everyone that comes that's new. And we don't say every week that if you give a cash contribution and you want it, us to track it, 
then you'll get a letter at the end of the year for tax purposes of all your donations. You need to provide us with your name and address every week. So the first part of the envelope is for cash donations for that purpose. If you're making a cash donation and you want us to track it, please fill that out and use this envelope. The second part has to do with people wanting to do one-time credit card or debit card donations. We have been taking monthly tithes for a long time where people tithe the same amount on their credit card every month. We've had the request for one-time donations or where it's a different amount. People say they don't always have their checkbook with them. So the second portion is to do that, to provide your credit card information and the signature and all of that. The people that collect, so if you want to do either of these, fill this out. You can just fold it in half and put it in the offering bag. Um, the people that are go collect counting the money will pull these out and anything that, any envelope that has something written on it will go in a separate bag and stay there until it's processed at the beginning of the week and then they will be shredded. If you typically use our envelope to put your check in, you can do that and you don't have to write on the envelope at all. So as I said, this is a, an experiment and we would love your feedback. You can write on the back. I wrote on the back, but those are my notes about what I'm saying. Um, <laughs> but you can write on the back, say you love it, you'd never use it. If you're not gonna use it, we'd appreciate hearing why, or if you have suggestions for how to improve it. So, thank you very much. We are joyously and richly blessed by all of you. And try out the envelope today. Thank you. Okay, yeah, I, I really appreciate the, the new envelopes because I've sat in, the, in, my, in, the, in my chair on many occasions and only had my debit card with me. I, I don't carry a checkbook anymore, so that's going to be really helpful for those of us that are, that are in that new technology. So uh, this week, this uh, Wednesday night, Even Song will be a, service, a healing service with Lisa Natoli and Brian Halithy. Uh, Lisa, uh, would you please stand so you can be recognized? Thank you. Lisa is an author, spiritual teacher, and activator through her teaching of A Course in Miracles. And Brian is on our Unity Music team. We want to, where's Brian? Brian? This week we have, uh, we'll be teaching a great prosperity class using the Four Spiritual Laws of Prosperity by Edwin Gaines. It's a five-week class. It's a tithing class, and it's transformational. You don't want to miss it. I, uh, Lisa and I took the class a year ago uh, when Shipley uh, taught it, and it has transformed my life. Uh, it's amazing what happens when you get into the uh, understanding of the spiritual laws of economics through tithing, receiving, giving, and also affirming. So you don't want to miss that, uh, that great class. And also, Kate McKay is, I don't know if she's in here, but she spoke to us last week. She's a really amazing teacher, and I know that, she, I know that you're going to enjoy her. Excuse me. The book is available at the bookstore if you want to get the book. Okay. Now we have a painting. Uh, we also have a Painting Your Story uh, workshop this week starting Thursday, April 18th. It's a four-week class with Christina Mariah and Beverly Mitchell. And this will prove to be a wonderful class that's offered helping souls to remember who they are through story painting. It's experiential, uh, bringing peace and healing through meditation and creative expression. It starts, uh, it starts this Thursday. Be sure to find all our classes today and additional information about what's going on here in our center in, the, uh, in your bulletin, the green highlight sheet. Oh, it's a six-week course. Okay, thank you for clear clearing that up. The dates that I saw, there were four dates. Okay, so uh, thank you for clearing that up. It's a six-week course. Good. That's, good. That's a good call. Okay, so we want to save the date. Uh, we have a gratitude, celebration, potluck, and dance party here in the fellowship hall after the service on May 19th. It's going to be a great time of uh, gathering. We'll have our own... We're having a DJ! 
Yeah, we'll have our own DJ. We'll have a DJ. Uh, it is a potluck, bring a dish. There's a $10 cover uh, per person and $15 for families. Please join us for that fun and celebration so we can sort of uh, get to know each other in an outside the church uh, environment. Unity on the River will have a fundraiser uh, sponsored by Patty Barkas in Lancaster, Massachusetts. It's at a Universalist church down there uh, with Lori Diamond and Fred Abatelli. And Patty Barkas is giving her proceeds uh, as an <clears throat> to Unity on the uh, River as a uh, offering, as a, uh, as a uh, fundraiser. Now uh, I want to ask uh, Carol Walrzak to come up and tell us about chaplain training, and then we'll have a testimony. Thank you. There you go. I stand in the presence. Namaste. Well, I wanted to let you know chaplain training is soon arriving. You can see the dates up there. I won't go into them, but it's actually the last Friday of the month, and uh, it's two Friday nights and two full days on Saturday. So how does one get to serve as a chaplain here? Well, it's a process. Um, we suggest that you be a member. That would mean that you've taken a prosperity class, you've taken Unity Basics, and we're also asking that you take a prayer course. And right now, Shipley is teaching Life of Prayer on Tuesday evenings. She did ask me to tell you, if anyone would like to join her class, this Tuesday is the last time to do so. And in the back on the sound booth, there are syllabuses. You can pick one up if you didn't get one. There's also PowerPoint of her first class. So if you're interested and you are called to be a chaplain, please sign up in hospitality or talk to me. It's a matter of holding our center in prayer, listening to people, and really reaching out to source because everything is possible with God. Also, if you're a chaplain or a trainee, right now we have 10 people signed up to take the training, which is great. Um, there is a retreat, and it's actually the Adeline Wood. Adeline, that's not quite right. Adeline Yes. Adeline Rood Retreat and Conference Center. I've been there twice. And it's in Byfield, Massachusetts. So um, you'll be hearing more information about that as well. So to end our announcements, um, I'd like to ask one of our chaplains to come up. His name is Tom Pellini, and he is going to do a testimonial about the chaplain program. All right, Tom. Yay, Tom. <laughs> Namaste. Namaste. Um, I can remember um, one of the classes that I took, I, they asked what was the intention, that, why, are, why are you taking this class? And, uh, and I said that I want to be able to see the good, see the God in everyone. And, uh, and not, not to have judgment, let judgment go. And sometimes, you know, during my regular work, day, I can do it. Sometimes I can't. But when I'm chaplaining, we're asked to hold the sacred space. And for me, what I do is vision everyone as light, as one light. And I hold that. I hold that vision for an hour and a half. And that's the feeling of oneness I get. For me, the rewards are tremendous. And the prayers that I say with someone, I feel that oneness again. So that's why I chaplain. Um, and uh, I thank you for that opportunity.
Yeah, that's amazing. I, the, the chaplain program, uh, Lisa and I started uh, Life of Prayer also. We're going to become chaplains. Uh, if anyone, if you're getting a pull right now for chaplain, just feel it. Feel the pull. It's a holy place of sacred expression and also holding the light for everything, for every situation. It's really a great... Uh, um, it's really a great program, and so, thank you. Now, uh, we're going to have our uh, gathering song. So, if you'll okay. please stand and take someone's hand if you feel comfor comfortable comfortable doing so. And coincidentally, it's called Gather Us In. <laughs> anything that doesn't serve any moving parts, let's enter into the garden, the sacred place of the Most High, the I am that I am, Father, Mother, God, divine love, here I am, here I am as you, as spirit, 
as love, as divine expression coming through this vessel and blessing and loving the world and the divine. And so it is. And so it is. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. This is seek first. Seek first the kingdom of heaven and all shall be added. Seek first the kingdom of heaven and all shall be added. Seek first the kingdom of heaven and all shall be added. Seek first the kingdom of heaven and all shall be added. Seek first the kingdom of heaven and all shall be added. Seek first the kingdom Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Unity on the River. We are a center of celebration and transformation. Thank you for being here. We'll have our vision statement now. Everyone centered in love, we joyously co-create a world of oneness, peace, and harmony. And now our mission, we are a vibrant spiritual community that celebrates the presence in all and awakens humanity to its divinity. Awesome. Our intention of the day is to invite our local selves through the Barbara Marks Hubbard work, to invite our local selves, any burdens, any cares that we have uh, about anything, just bring that into the essential self. And uh, we're practicing this year the journey of emergence and this is the emergence process that's taking place in that. Uh, right now we have a, we have a guest uh, speaker that you're going to love. Uh, I'll introduce him in, in just a minute. His name is Reverend Ed Townley. But first we'll have a greeting for first time guests. If you would please, uh, we want to welcome anyone that's celebrating with us for the first time. If you would please raise your hand 
Yes, raise your hand. Thank you so much. Uh, welcome. welcome. We want to bless you and thank you for coming. <clears throat> Give you a flower and greet you. Uh, we, we have a welcome team that will greet you after the service. Uh, direct you to the welcome table and uh, give you a CD. It's a really great talk from Shipley to tell you about our center. I know you'll want to listen to it. And uh, you enrich our experience here. We thank you for coming. Please join us in fellowship after the service uh, for hospitality. Uh, now, if you would please rise. We want to uh, greet each other. Take a minute to say namaste. I see you. I love you. I see the magnificence in you. I see your divine self. Thank you. Beautiful, beautiful. Now we have Maura Lynch. And the Unity Music Team. I love what Bill said. This is our home. It's great. It's really great. Good job, Bill. This is called Be Still My Soul. Be still my soul.
Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maura. That was very touching. Thank you. Beautiful. Okay, Unity on the River and guests. It is my divine honor and privilege to introduce our guest speaker, Reverend Ed Townley. He has served Unity Centers in Beaverton, Oregon, Chicago, Dallas, and Hartford since his ordination in 1991. He's one of the most in-demand speakers in the Unity movement and is, known, is, very, is well known for his enthusiastic metaphysical interpretations of the Bible and for his understanding of the hero's journey as a roadmap to our own individual spiritual unfoldment. His most recent book, which is available in the bookstore, is Kingdom Come. It's a guide to the book of Revelation published last year, 2012, by Unity Books. He is also the author of The Secret According to Jesus, a guide to the Sermon on the Mount. He, is, he hosts a weekly discussion program over Unity Online and answers Bible questions submitted through the International Unity website. Rev, Rev Ed, as they call him, is the founder of Spirit Expressing, a non-church ministry dedicated to exploring the creative process through which we are called upon to bring a new dimension of spiritual consciousness into manifestation. Spirit Expressing is currently offering weekly classes in the Hartford area based on Townley's book as well as monthly social and spiritual gatherings. Please join me, ladies and gentlemen, as we offer a warm Unity welcome to Reverend Ed Townley. Namaste. Namaste. It is such an honor to be here. Um, Shipley is one of my favorite <coughs> colleagues. Someone I turn to, she has a light that shines far beyond the limits of this congregation. And uh, she's just a dear friend. We had dinner last night, and uh, uh, she warned me about you all, so. <laughs> so I'm ready. I want to start with a sort of public service announcement. I came this morning, and I was, I was given a tour of this amazing facility and especially the wing, the youth and family wing, which has been decluttered yesterday. Yay to all of you who decluttered. And I managed to clutter because somewhere in the course of that tour, I lost a button off my coat. Now, that voice in me that is always saying, this is the Sunday when they're gonna find out you're a fraud and you have nothing to say and they're all gonna... You know that voice? You're, uh, that voice immediately said, well, it doesn't matter what you say, everybody's going to be staring at your no button. You know? <laughs> so I thought, let me just point it out to begin with. <laughs> so we can get that out of the way. I love your mission statement. Um, it's, it's unique and it's, it's, uh, it's special to you. And I love the statement that you are helping humanity awaken to its divinity. And it seems to me that I have to assume from that that you are all indeed awakened to your divinity. Yeah? Amen? Amen? And that perhaps that became even stronger in you two weeks ago when we celebrated the resurrection. Because we understand that we're not celebrating simply the resurrection that, uh, that happened 2,000 years ago. We are celebrating a lifting in our own consciousness, a resurrection in our consciousness. I know from talking to Shipley that you had a Lenten series here, and Lent has become one of my, much to my surprise, one of the most powerful times of year for me on my spiritual journey. As a, as a former Catholic, I thought Lent was something I left behind as soon as I got out of my mother's house, you know, <laughs> and would never have to deal with again, because I still have resentments, because when I was eight years old, uh, I mean, Lent is when you sort of choose to give things up, but in my house, <laughs> there were requirements. You, 
you gave up candy and you gave up movies. Movies, oh my, I mean, that was my life. And when I was eight years old, the Disney movie, Journey, uh, 20,000 Leagues Beneath the Sea came, and I begged and I pleaded for an exception for one movie. I did not get it. I still have not seen that movie. I will never see that movie. <laughs> because I'm just going to show them, you know, how I feel about that. So, so, so to think that I would find Lent powerful and important again was really astonishing to me. But Charles Fillmore, one of our co-founders, wrote a book called Keep a True Lent. And he presents Lent as a, a, as a declaring, just exactly what you were doing yesterday. He calls it brushing away cobwebs. You know, we, we accumulate stuff. We accumulate stuff. You do it in your home. You know, I can remember uh, when I was, it, I, am the, I am the least anonymous 12-stepper you have ever met because it's a part of my whole ministry. So when I was still fairly new in that recovery process, I was astonished. I ran to a meeting. I literally did. I was not a well person. I ran to a meeting to share the news that if you took out every day as much newspaper and magazine as you brought in, you would not accumulate. Who knew this? <laughs> Who knew? You know? It's the same thing with it's the same thing with our spiritual energy, you know? You let a little negative energy sit in there for a while and you think I'll I'll deal with it later, I'll I'll remove it later. And pretty soon you've got whole cupboards full of old issues of National Geographic that you don't know where they ever came from. <laughs> And it takes trucks to get them out, you know? So, so Lent is that brushing away, the removing the obstacles, the clearing out of our, of our closets in consciousness so that we can fully be and accept that resurrection energy. And, and you feel that, you know? If, you, if you've done the 40 days of work, it's a very significant and important, it was the most joyful um, Easter I've experienced, I think, in my life this, this, this year. Now, the question is, what next? What's beyond the resurrection? Now that we're resurrected, where do we go next? And the answer, I think, is very similar to something that my first sponsor said to me um, when I was new in the program, and I said, and he was encouraging me to look at the 12 steps. I was not a fan of the 12 steps at the time. I was, my attitude was really, I felt like I was a blessing to them and they were lucky to have me. You know? I recently had dinner in New York with, I, I got sober in New York. I had dinner with somebody who, um, who I knew in those early days. I've been sober now for 38 years. So it was a while ago. Oh, please. Yeah. I take no credit for it. I don't know how it happened. It just, you know, there was a time when 38 days seemed like a ridiculous idea, and all of a sudden you just, you know, you just keep showing up. But I, I, was, so I was having dinner with this guy, and, and he said, you know, I can remember when you first came in the program, we were always so surprised to see you back at another meeting, you know, because <laughs> I, had, I had a terrible attitude. Um, so I said to my sponsor, well, suppose I did these 12 steps. Just suppose they had anything to do with me, and I actually worked through them. What happens when you get to 12? You know, I thought maybe you get a diploma for the wall, or, you know, a hat to wear at meetings, or a sash, or something, you know, like a prayer chaplain sash, something that said, I have made it through the 12 steps. I said, what happens after the 12th step? And he said, the first step. And I thought, oh. <laughs> Why, why bother then? But I understand that now, don't you? Because we resurrect into a new dimension of consciousness, and now we've got, we've got to go through the whole process again. We've got to get used to this new consciousness. What does it feel like? What does it mean? What does it suggest to us? And that's why, um, although, as, as, uh, as, as was mentioned, and is available in the bookstore, my new book is on the book of Revelation, which is, of course, the last book in the Bible. But I want to look today at a book that is very closely related, which is the first book in the Bible, which is Genesis. Because I really believe that everything starts with why am I here? What do I believe about this life experience? 
I've been told that I'm here because Eve ate an apple. Don't ask. It's a long story. <laughs> God is still angry. We're here to be punished. The more we suffer, the happier God is. And if we suffer enough, then God may cut us some slack and strike us dead so we can go to heaven. <laughs> Does this sound like a story you've heard? You know, I'm not exaggerating. This is the story I grew up with. Okay, we don't believe that anymore. What do we believe? Well, Course in Miracles says, we're not here at all. <laughs> That's encouraging, but it doesn't quite match with my daily experience. <laughs> We're asleep, and this is a dream. Now, I bought that. I taught the Course in Miracles at, at Unity in Chicago for years before I went into ministerial school. Um, and I went into ministerial school with a chip on my shoulder that said, if Unity tries to tell me that I have to give up the Course, I'm going to leave. Well, I was planning to leave ministerial school anyway, because it was obviously not going to work. Uh, and anybody could see I was not meant to be a minister. I couldn't believe they'd actually accepted me. You know? I kept one bag packed the entire first year I was there. True. True story. True. And then one day, in metaphysics class, I had a real awakening. I can still feel it. And I realized the difference between Course in Miracles and Unity and Charles Fillmore. Charles Fillmore said, this isn't an illusion. This isn't a punishment. This is where we're supposed to be on our spiritual path. We have agreed to come into this experience, to create a new consciousness called the Kingdom of Heaven. Now, it's true, perhaps, that we should have read the fine print. <laughs> because you know that we were eager to do this because we thought this will be a snap, this will be fun. We'll bring our spiritual selves and we'll dance and we'll party and we'll have a wonderful time. And then we had no idea how dense this experience was going to get and how distracted we would become from our spiritual purpose at all. And indeed, metaphysically, I see the whole Bible as that hero's journey, as a journey of getting lost in our humanity and then finding our way again and finding our way and moving to the point where we can begin to be what Barbara Marks Hubbard calls conscious creators. When we can consciously do what we are unconsciously doing all the time, which is creating our life experience, creating the consciousness in which we live. If we become conscious about that, I mean, think of what wonderful things we can accomplish when we know who we are and what we are here to do. So it all goes back to that story, the, the first story you probably learned in Bible school, in whatever denomination you were, if, if, whether Christian or Jewish, certainly. And every, every religion has an origin story, and they're very much the same. You know, we have four characters. We have Adam and Eve, God and a serpent. And sometime... I would love to come over here and I do a workshop on this where we really start, we really do some role playing among these four characters. Because it's important that we realize that God is present in it all. You know, why do you suppose God, a God of infinite love, who has created itself as the Christ, defined the Christ from its own energy with all of the infinite expressions of the Christ that we all are, and then said, this is your garden. Play, do, relax. You see that big, gorgeous, beautiful tree there with the irresistibly delicious fruit? Don't touch it. Why would an infinitely loving God do that? Unless God then tiptoes away 
and whispers to the serpent waiting in the wings, I hope they catch on. Because the secret of that first story of Genesis is that God wants us to do exactly what we did. God wants that Eve, that creative part of us, to say, you know what? I'm getting kind of sick of this garden. <laughs> it's nice and all, but there's nothing to create. I can't redecorate. <laughs> if I hear that rib story one more time, I'm out of here. And the serpent comes in and says, go ahead, eat that fruit. You won't die, you will live. You will live, you will achieve all wisdom, you will become creative. And both God and the serpent are right. Because you eat that fruit and you do die, you, you step into the illusion of good and evil. You step into an experience of duality, out of a unified world into a, an experience of duality, which involves the illusion of death. So yes, that eating that apple will cause you to, to accomplish a, a fear of death. But the serpent is also right. Because eating that fruit and moving into duality is how we begin to create. You can't make creative choices if there's nothing to choose between. So we have to create that illusion of choice so that we can learn, so that we can express. And we have to do it ourselves. God can't make us do it. That is the gift of free will. But God, that power, that source, that divine mind, that energy source that loves us infinitely and is us infinitely and wants to express this kingdom because that's its nature and needs to do it through us because that's our nature. That God can support us as we make that choice. And when you look at the passage that is always quoted as God's punishment, you know, because you did this thing, because you were disobedient, you're gonna, it's going to hurt when you have kids, and you're going to have to make your own food. I'm not going to feed you anymore. He's not punishing. He's describing consequences. Choices have consequences. And the choice that you've made is not an easy choice. You're going, you want to be creative. You want to give birth to new expressions of life. Fine, it's going to hurt like hell. <laughs> but fine. You want to be on your own. You want to create for yourself, fine, but you're going to have to learn how to do that in a dualistic world. Now you have to learn how it works. Now you have to learn about life in duality. But in the next verse, he packs them a little suitcase. You know, he says you can't go into duality in fig leaves. You know, that's not going to work. So he dresses them up like a little Ken and Barbie, you know. <laughs> We should do, we, there should be a Ken and Barbie in the Garden of Eden, you know, with little fig leaves and things. Never mind. Um, but you're, you're looking for fundraisers, that could be, that could be a winner. I'm just saying, I... So he makes clothes for them. He gently nudges them out of the garden. And there's another tree that he suddenly notices, the tree of life. The tree of infinite life. And we're told that he posts guards around the tree with flaming swords to keep us from getting there. That sounds kind of mean. <laughs> but it's a choice of infinite love, as I see it. Because what he's saying is, if they eat from that tree too soon, if they eat from that tree when they are still locked in believing in duality, when they are still believing in their own limitations, they're going to be locked forever at whatever level they ate the fruit. So let's, let's protect it so that they can't get at it until they're ready. And off we go into this new experience of duality. With the divine energy there at every step, you know, Cain slays Abel, and there is God saying, now you see, that wasn't such a good choice. What did Cain know? You know, there's a wonderful, Jean-Claude Van Italy, a, one of my, a wonderful American playwright, uh, has a play called The Serpent, and one of the mantras in the play about that moment 
it's repeated over and over, Cain killing Abel, Cain killing Abel, and the chorus in the background is saying, Cain wanted to kill Abel, but he didn't want Abel dead. Don't you know how that feels? Haven't you ever thought, I really want to kill that person. It's not that I want them dead, I just want them to fall down dead and then get up and apologize to me, you know? <laughs> well, Cain didn't know that wouldn't work, so he had to learn. We have lessons to learn. Lessons and lessons and lessons. And then we move all the way, thousands of pages, to the very end of the Bible, to the book of Revelation, the 22nd chapter, the final chapter in the Bible. And there, for the first time since Genesis, there is the tree of life. The new Jerusalem has come down to, to earth, a new consciousness. And in that consciousness, we now know who we are. Now we can claim our eternal life. Now we can be the Christ in expression. Now we can freely eat the tr fruit. It's just an amazing bookend to the story in between. And it tells us that what we do after a resurrection is we learn how to live in a, in a new consciousness. We learn how to be now. How, do, how am I now that I know who I am? Now that I'm more comfortable being who I am? Now that I don't have to feel uncomfortable every time someone challenges me or, or I come across family members who see things differently? The more comfortable I get, the more, the more comfortable I have to be in the world around me. So that's kind of, that's certainly what Spirit expressing in the, the, the non-church ministry that, that I'm working with in, in uh, Hartford, in Manchester, is doing this year, is what, you know, how, how, what does it mean now that I know my own divinity? I can't see anything the same again. That doesn't mean I say this is all an illusion, you know. It means that I see it differently, that I approach it differently, and it means beyond all else that I come together with people like this to laugh, to dance, to sing, to play music, to celebrate together so that we remember, so that we encourage each other. It's what's so wonderful about unity. I think it's what's so wonderful about this unity in particular. We don't come together because there's more God here or in Shipley than there is in you. There isn't. Don't tell her I said that, but there isn't. <laughs> We come together because the God in you blesses and supports the God in me. You see in me what I sometimes forget to see in myself, and I see it so much more easily in you than I do in me. That's what brings us together. That's what makes us unique. That's what makes us special. That's what makes me so happy to be here with you today. So thank you for that. Let's take that into a meditation together. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Special thanks to John and Judy, who were my hosts last night. And uh, I suggest you declare yourself homeless so you can go and be a guest in their house. It's a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful, rich experience. Now, you're going to have to guide me into the meditation. I'm not sure how we do this, so... Yes, yes, that's fine. Thank you. You know what you're doing. Carry on. <laughs> I'll come in when it seems appropriate. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Blessing to the World.
blessing to the world. I am here to bless the world through every choice I make. I am here to join with the energy that I have helped create in this room at this moment. It is an energy filled with infinite possibility. Is an energy I claim with every breath. It is an energy that guides my inner focus from the busyness of thoughts in mind scurrying for attention up to what Jesus calls the upper room at the heart of my being. And with my focus, gently centered in my heart, I see everything from a higher, more beautiful perspective. I look to the left and I can see the path that led me to this place, to this perception, to this moment. A path that seemed haphazard and wandering at best, but which now shines like a beautiful, beautiful design of spiritual inevitability. And I see that even the most apparently negative moments in my past, in my life, have been steps in this journey. I have never been off my path. And I turn. And in the other direction, I see the path continuing from this moment. And it quickly turns a corner, disappears from my sight. But I know, I know that I will be as safe and protected going forward as I have been every step of the way to here. And I take this moment to appreciate the journey this far and to decide to take the next step forward, whatever it may be. And I make that decision in the presence of God, as God, in the silence of God. I know that this silence is not empty. It is filled with the infinite possibility of the divine. And I step forward to continue my spiritual journey to be a blessing to the world. Open and eager to be loved, to be astonished, to be challenged, to know myself as the Christ I am, 
creating the kingdom of heaven and for this awareness and for the infinite love that is my very being and goes with me every step of the way, I say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And amen. <coughs> bless the prayers in the prayer box with the love and the light of the I am the Christ that we are we bless all of these in affirmations in saying that all of the authors of these prayers are the Christ they are the light I am as we are and we bless all of you. And so it is. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you so much, music, the music team, Unity Music Team. Thank you so much, music team. And thank you so much, Reverend Ed Townley. Awesome. Wow, way better than I, I, I didn't expect it to be that good. I knew it was going to be great. It was better than I expected. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Unity Music Team. Thank you, uh, thank you, Sound Team and Streaming. Welcome to our service st live streaming. I forgot to mention you. I uh, it's my first platform uh, duty here at Unity on the River. So, Good job, thank you. Thank you, PowerPoint, Frank and Jay and Chuck, and thank you, Rosemary, and thank you, welcome team and hospitality. We love you and uh, we appreciate you. And uh, before we move into our offerings, we have a couple of testimonies. Is Mark Givis uh, with us this morning? Come on up here, Mark. Okay, there you go. We're good? He's doing a great job today. Wow. I see you. 
Oh, and I see you too. I sit in the presence. Namaste. So, uh, it's been about a year now since I came to Unity. Um, like many of you who um, have discovered Unity, you may have come from a background of, uh, uh, you know, a different faith or whatever, and, and maybe like, like myself, um, you discovered along the way that, ah, you know, there's just something more that I'm looking for. And, um, you know, so over time, I kind of became a little, uh, I don't know, restless in my spirituality, and I didn't have a place to go and express it and explore it more. And then uh, about a year ago, my daughter Aspen said, you know, there's this great church in town I hear about. It's called Unity on the River. And, uh, you know, why don't we go check it out? So I came here about a year ago, and um, within five minutes, I knew I found a new spiritual home. It was just, there's so much love in life here. And you can feel it in the people, you can feel it in the spirit. It's just very vibrant. And, you know, for us to have a, a, you know, a session like today where you're here for the first time and it's all beautiful and all good, you know, that's part of what unity is all about. So it's been, it's been a great joy. Uh, so anyway, I kind of embraced unity and I took the uh, unity basics course and I took the prosperity course. And I started, you know, applying these things I'm learning into my life, you know, trying to learn and and do these types of things. And I figured after a year, all right, let's tell people what I got. Let's see what's happened to me. So, so here we go. <laughs> I'm as tall as I was when I started. <laughs> but there are, some, there are some really good things that have happened here. Um, one of the things I've been kind of working on is growing my business, making it more successful, and it's been a challenge. It, it, it's been a lot of uh, some big challenges. Um, but you know what? Some amazing miracles happened at just the right time over the past year. Um, it was in, while I was taking the Unity Basics class. Um, you know, money was a little tight, and uh, you know, business was struggling a little bit. And this 401k that I had a long time ago, I forgot all about. They contacted me. They said, Mr. Gibbous, we've been trying to get a hold of you for months now. We have a check for like $9,000 that we have to give to you. And, you know, we've been looking for you. And here it is. So, so that was nice. <laughs> so <laughs> so that, was, that was a beautiful little miracle that happened uh, at just the right time. Other little miracles were um, my team of, uh, of guys that I have working with me. They just became so awesome. You know, the people that came into my organization are just the right and perfect people at the right and perfect time. Uh, so I'm pleased to say that after, um, you know, this past year, my company, WeatherSource, has been growing. It's been thriving. It's been, uh, you know, I've got great people. I've got great customers. And things are just looking all that much better. So that was one of the big miracles. Other miracles, of course, are my relationships with my wife and family. It's just been, you know, we enjoy unity here. We enjoy each other. It's... it's uh, it's all good. So, uh, going forward, you know, I'm going to continue to grow. I'm going to continue to, you know, try to take more steps forward than steps back, and uh, just keep on enjoying, you know, the the family that I've found here. So, thank you all very much. Great, great. Thank you so much. This is definitely a, a community where we uh, grow and we, uh, we find enrichment through the prosperity classes and all of the things that are offered here. Uh, also, I, I, I did see Kate McKay was here uh, earlier. I don't know if she's still, there she is. Let's recognize Kate McKay. She's, she is teaching the uh, prosperity class to Edwin Gaines and uh, just want to thank her for being here and for doing that <laughs> starting this week. And you can, you can sign up for her prosperity class in hospitality after the service. Uh, now we have another uh, testimony one, uh, from Greg Meyer. He's going to tell us about the April board fundraiser. Thank you, Greg. I stand in the presence. Unity on the River is my spiritual home. Thank you, Mark, for that. I couldn't have said it any better. Um, any of you who know me or have seen me on Facebook or anything like that, you know that another spiritual home of mine is the University of Cincinnati. I'm a huge fan. 
You know, I have a donor there. Erica and I are both graduates. We're both donors. And we get a lot out of it. So um, I'm coming to you today from a space of rooting for your home team. So Unity on the River is my spiritual home team. Uh, at home on 9 Greenwood Street, well, one thing first. Uh, if you've seen, take a look at the hallway back there. You'll see what my closets look like. Because <laughs> Erica took the time to declutter. And there are a number of bins over there. They all look the same. And they all have labels on them. There's even one that has a label maker in it, in a bin with the label, label maker. <laughs> we have one of those at home. There's nothing wrong with that. But I'm coming to you today uh, to speak about an opportunity. So uh, through the generosity of one of, our, one of our congregants, Ann Breyer, thanks again, Ann, uh, she's created the consciousness here and the conditions for us to raise some more uh, funds and some more capital for Unity on the River. So uh, in the spirit of rooting for your home team, rooting for your spiritual home of Unity on the River, you know, I'd like to give us all the opportunity to you know, look at the number that we had. So um, Ann and her, the stock donation is currently at the number of $7,453.65. So again, $7,453.65. Our intentions for the month of April, we started last week, April, uh, the first Sunday of April, and we're gonna do it for this one and the next three, next two, a total of four, are to match that number. So this is our opportunity here in the congregation, here on streaming, and from other areas, you know, unexpected good. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven, and all will be added. We are the heart. We are the hands. We are the voice of spirit on earth. Amen. And all we are, and all we do, is a blessing to the world and unity on the river. So here we are. So, Erica and I talked this morning. I had an epiphany this morning, you know, because it was one of our ideas in the board to, I called it WBUR, you know, NPR. If anyone listens to public radio, you know that there are fun drives from time to time, right? Yeah. So what's another part of a fun drive? It's not just getting up and making the announcements during prime time. By the way, this is prime time for you on the river. <laughs> but it's also adding incentives. So here are our incentives, along with prosperity, along with creating the conditions for prosperity, like we heard about last week from Janet Connor. Other incentives for you are the following. We're going to have a $25 gift certificate for Morning Buzz in Amesbury, a $50 gift certificate for the Ale House, a $75 gift certificate for Flatbread Pizza, and a $100 gift certificate for Fat Cat's Bistro. So these are all restaurants around Amesbury. These are part of our spiritual good. They're a part of our community. We support them. They give to us. You know, hopefully they'll give back to us. We may approach them at some point. But um, we're going to start to create that conversation with the community. So Erica and I are donating those gift certificates. So everyone who makes an offering in the matching contribution campaign has an opportunity to win one of those incentives. So new envelopes. As you prepare your regular tithes, the normal tithing and giving that you do every week, every Sunday, use this envelope. And go ahead and start now if you want. You don't have to like watch me or you can still hear me, I'm sure. So go ahead and start now if you'd like, but let's try, let's use these envelopes. And when you use this envelope for a matching contribution, just write match somewhere on the envelope or write it on, your, on the memo line of your check. Or if you're streaming and you go through PayPal, there's a donate button. Joe, Jay, did you hit your 40 this week? No. Ah, not this week. All right, we had 49 last week. So uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's always a great number. So if you're streaming, all you have to do is click donate and put memo on one, or in the memo, put uh, match and fund. So again, we are the heart, we are the hands, we are the voice of spirit on earth. This is our opportunity to be the hands, to be the heart and to really help Unity on the River to continue to thrive and prosper. Thank you. So I just want to give an update on where we are with the campaign after the first week, and we have raised $1,027. So thank you all so much, and let's keep going. Now, Jane, I was, uh, I was thinking last time I heard it was uh, matched by about $527, so more money is always coming in. We are, uh, we are a prosperous community here at Unity on the River, 
All things come to us with ease and joy and glory. And we are so grateful. Thank you. Um, so now as we prepare for our offerings, we'll be receiving our tithes and offerings in just a minute. Uh, before we do, I want to introduce our chaplains uh, in the four corners. If you would stand or raise your hand as you're able. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I love the chaplain. The, the energy of the chaplains is something that uh, Lisa and I, that's the reason we are becoming chaplains because they, like Tom said, I love that testimony, Tom. Thank you very much for that because that just really spoke to my heart for the reason I want to be a chaplain because they hold the light for the whole service. They're sitting there holding us in the presence of the divine. And that's what we all are, is that divine. So they're just holding the light in this space. It's awesome. Um, so whatever you have in your heart now, if you would, um, uh, would, would like to, uh, if you're able to, let's see, whatever you have. Mm. Oh, okay, never mind. Uh, yeah, if, if you have anything that you would like to uh, share with the, with the chaplain, something that is uh, a burden to you or something that you would like uh, prayer over, please uh, see the chaplains uh, after the service and they are trained in a matter of uh, that kind of communication and that, that uh, intimacy and also <coughs> confidentiality. Thank you, chaplains. Okay, so we'll bless the uh, tithes and the offerings. Divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you. I see and hear him everywhere and He is all around me He's everywhere I look And then today is just a new page In God's coloring book And each day is but a new page In God's coloring book Brian Hallisey, awesome. Thank you. Thank you.
We bless these uh, tithes and offerings. We bless the giver and uh, thank you, uh, Divine Mother, Father, God. Express these gifts to the giver and just use them for, uh, for our good, for the, for the uh, good of this center. And we thank you and so it is. Amen. <laughs> Our celebration song today is The River is Here. Thank you so much, uh, Unity Music Team, Choir, Sound Team. Thank you so much for an awesome uh, day. Appreciate it. Now uh, it's time to bring in the little ones. We'll welcome the Youth and Family Ministry. We are walking in the light of God. We are walking. 
before we uh, before we uh, introduce Christina Mariah, I just want to uh, recognize Erica Meyer, uh, Greg's wife. She was here. She she was here putting all. She organized the clutter, the declutter team yesterday. They actually uh, donated all the new bins for the for that uh, project, and we just want to recognize Erica Meyer for an awesome job. Thank you, Erica. You are a blessing. Quite an organizer. Yeah, feel free, rocking it. It's amazing transformation. You have to go out and see all of the education department. It's. I'm very grateful for everyone who came yesterday. We had about 12 people that showed. There were teachers and congregants and uh, team members. And we're so happy about the progress and what has transformed in our joy room and all through youth and family ministry. So thank you, Erica. Thank you, Jane. Thank you, Bill. It was awesome. And everybody else. So today in youth and family ministry, we witnessed the miracle of Jesus. We looked at the wedding of Cana and how he turned water into wine. And we also turned water into juice, <laughs> <or> wine. <laughs> <laughs> and then we uh, had a feast around it. And the, the main lesson was that we can turn our thoughts into more life-affirming, positive thoughts, just like Jesus turned the water into wine. It was an amazing lesson. So we have a special, we have a special tribute. Where is she? Bethany. Our Bethany is going through a rites of passage, and uh, she's turning 13 in a couple days. Yeah. And Carol's going to do a blessing for you. Hi, Bethany. This is a special coming-of-age blessing for you. We are gathered here together to celebrate the entrance into young womanhood of the beloved child of spirit, Bethany. You are charged by spirit to enter with us into the adult population of the world. You have lived for 12 years, and now you come to the final stages of your childhood. Although we do not offer you a perfect world, we invite you to participate with us fully in the sacred task of healing that world. Bethany, may the prayers of those who have loved you and raised you fill you up as you now go forth. May angels surround you and uphold you all of your days. May you be blessed forever. May the road before you be clear and light. May you find your friends. May you find your home. May you find your talents. May you bear your burdens. May you know the joy of full contribution. May spirit lift you up. May she make her countenance to shine upon you. May she guide you and your footsteps forever. Thank you, Spirit. And we all say, Amen. 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 And let's give her a round of applause. I have one special announcement. Today, we have a music leader that's coming in 
to interview, so we'd like parents and children to come back to the Joy Room to listen to Joseph, our uh, potential music leader, and let us know if you like him. <laughs> because if you like him, we will have a new music leader by next weekend. So that's a, another nice blessing to you. Okay, who's going to pray with us? Enfolds us. We have the light of God. The power of God protects us. We have the power of God. The presence of God watches over us. We have the presence of God. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well, and we are richly blessed.